Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here and welcome to my first Q&A. I've been getting a lot of comments lately with a lot of really good questions and I just want to take some time here to answer some of them. So if you're interested in that, then keep on watching. All right, we're just gonna dive right into the first one here. What kind of clay do you use? I use polymer clay, I get this question all the time. Polymer clay, it's a synthetic clay, it's not air dry, you don't need a kiln to fire it, you just cure it in a conventional oven. As far as the brand goes, I like Sculpey. Um, super Sculpey to be exact, this is the clay that I'm using in every single video, it's the beige stuff. And it comes in these nice little one pound boxes. I haven't really tried any other brands of clay just because this stuff has been so good to me over the years and I've had no reason to switch. Next question, how do you bake the clay? All right, to answer this, your best bet is to follow the instructions on the back of the box, which is um, on this one it says to bake on oven proof glass or metal surface at 275 degrees Fahrenheit, 130 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes per quarter inch of thickness. So with that, I usually bake my stuff for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes at 275 and I'm good to go. So just pay attention to the instructions on the back of your box. All right, next question. Do you paint your sculptures before or after you bake them? After you bake them, you want them to be completely hardened and cool down before you paint. Next one, what kind of tools do you use? I use stainless steel wax carving tools. I got a 12 piece set from Amazon a few years ago and I love them. The exact set that I bought isn't listed anymore, but there are several just like it if you wanna check those out. All right, next question. Will you be doing more thrift store transformations? Yes, I hope to do a lot of them this year and I'm hoping to do one every other video and then do an in original sculpture in between all of those or maybe even more thrift store transformations than that. I don't know, but I do know that the video this week is gonna be another thrift store transformation and it's really cool. I'm really excited about it and I'm actually gonna start on it after I'm done filming this. Do you have to slip and score with polymer clay? No, you don't, you can just put two pieces together and blend it and you're good to go. It'll bond together just fine. If you want to stick two pieces of clay together without blending them, then I would recommend using a liquid clay like Bacon Bond or um, translucent liquid clay. And this is Bake and Bond, not Bacon Bond. That's my Michigan accent coming out here. And translucent liquid clay. All right, next question. How tall are you? I am 6'5". Next one. The music sounds like a ringtone. I know, my music sucks. I need to figure that out. Next question. How long do your sculptures take to make? You should say at the end of the videos. Um, it really just depends on how hard they are for me to do. I mean, the, an easier sculpture can take me four hours. A harder one can take me 16. So it really just depends. The Sea Witch that I just finished recently took me, I think, six hours to sculpt and exactly 45 minutes to paint. And I do plan to start putting the total production time at the end of each video so you guys know how long each thing took me to make. Next one. Too fast, slow down a little bit. Love to watch you work, thanks for sharing. Yes, I know, I need to slow down the time-lapse portions of the videos. I just, I'm still trying to get a feel for everything. I'm very new to YouTube still, so I'm still learning. So if you could just bear with me for a little bit, um, I will slow the time lapses down a, a bit in the next, in the coming videos. I just always like, I don't want it to be like a 35, 45 minute long video, but you, if you guys are okay with that, then I'm more than happy to do it. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. <laughs> this next one's funny. You should look into some lighting setups for your headshots. Creating a little more dynamic lighting with some side lights and some shadows on your face would really go a long way. There's heaps of interview lighting tutorials on YouTube. <laughs> I'm using a really cheap box light that I bought like six years ago and my floor at light. So, I don't know. It's good for now. I'll work my way up to something better. <laughs> next question. What kind of paint do you use? I use acrylic paint for everything. Brand wise, I use Americana or Folk Art. And I always go for the matte ones, not the satin or glossy ones, just because those are really hard to blend with each other in dry brush. The matte is a lot easier for me to work with personally. Not knocking, glossy or satin, if you like that better, that's awesome. I just, it's not for me. I prefer matte. Now when you're going out to buy your paints, make sure that you read the bottle because the satin ones and the matte ones look exactly the same except for that little line of text right there that says satin paint, this says matte. So make sure you look for that. And then on the Americana ones, I think the matte ones don't even say matte, they just say acrylic paint. 
and the satin ones will say satin and the glossy ones will say glossy. So just make sure you read the bottle before you bring it home. I don't even know why I have this one. I need to take it back because it's satin. Next question. Uh, uh, uh. Why don't you try using rubbing alcohol instead of clay softener to smooth your sculptures? It's much cheaper. I tried using rubbing alcohol before and I just don't like it. I just don't think it works that well for me personally. But if you want a cheaper alternative to clay softener, I would recommend baby oil. It's pretty much the same exact thing. I just think that the clay softener or baby oil breaks down the surface of the clay a little bit better. And it's just what I prefer to use. Next question. Do you draw your ideas before you sculpt them? No. And the reason why I don't is because I hate drawing. <laughs> I used to love it. When I was little, I drew all the time, like nonstop I was drawing, but all my drawing classes in college just burnt me out so bad that I just don't draw anymore. <laughs> I'd rather just sculpt straight from my head. But with that said, I do sketch out sculptures that I'm making for customers just because I want them to know everything that's gonna be included in the piece before I sculpt it. I don't want them coming back later and being like, where's the shovel or you know, whatever. I want them to know exactly what it's gonna look like before I start making it and before they pay for it, of course. Next one, what is your camera setup like? I can't figure out where to put mine when I'm sculpting slash drawing so it doesn't feel like it's in the way or too angled from the side. Great channel, love it. Um, <laughs> my camera setup is literally one of those crappy gooseneck tripod things that like clips onto the side of the table. And my camera is my phone. And we just talked about the lights. And I have an iPhone 8. I use the front facing camera to record my head, head shots and then the back facing camera to record my hands when I'm sculpting. All right, next question here. What is the wizard's name? <laughs> I've gotten a lot of people asking me this. Someone did comment, and we're just gonna go with this comment as the answer to that question. If any mortal learns it, then the seal on his powers will break and he'll be free to enslave the world. Can't beat that. Next one. Can you make an ASMR sculpting video? I feel like it would be so relaxing to watch you sculpt and hear all the noises. <laughs> oh boy. Um. Maybe I'll do one or two in the future, but honestly, the thought of sculpting in dead silence makes my skin crawl. So I don't know. Like I said, maybe I'll do a couple, we'll see. Next one. It sounds like he's saying bake and bond. Like I said, it's my Michigan accent. It's bake and bond. <laughs> I could see how somebody would think that though if you didn't know what it was. Next one. Uh, what do you do with these sculptures when you're done with them? They sit in a cabinet in my living room <laughs> that I am very quickly growing out of. Um, I kind of keep them there as trophies. Eventually I plan on selling them, but for the time being, they're gonna stay right here with me. Next one. You should repaint the wizard how you really want it to. Yes, I really wanna make a video on this where I completely re-sculpt and redesign the wizard and make it how I would wanna make it today, not follow what I thought was cool 10 years ago. So yeah, that's definitely coming. Next question. Does the masking tape catch on fire in the oven? No, it doesn't because 275 degrees is not hot enough to catch it on fire. At a higher temperature, I don't know. All right, this next one's really funny to me. I don't know why. I have never seen some of your techniques. Masking tape, no wire wrapped on the arms, and a wooden skewer just in there with nothing to keep it stuck in, and it all works. Interesting. <laughs> it does work. I mean, why make it more work if you don't have to, right? Next question here. Do you cover the bottom of the sculpture with a sheet of clay or do you leave it as it is with the aluminum foil sticking out? And the answer is yes, I do cover the bottom with clay. I either do this as the first step when I'm adding the clay to the foil or after I bake it so I don't mess up the rest of the sculpture, I'll just kind of like add it in there and then bake it again. On the pieces that have a wooden base, like the frog print sculpture that I did, I will put a little piece of sticker felt at the bottom to make it really fancy and finish it off. Next question, this is an excerpt from a comment here. Maybe one video you could explain some of your painting techniques, like what paintbrush for what, how to manipulate it, color mixing, etc. And yes, this is definitely coming. I'm definitely gonna make a painting focused video soon. Next question, how did you find out this was something you'd wanna do and make videos of? Well, the first time I used polymer clay was in seventh grade in art class when we all sculpted little Santa ornaments. And I just remember thinking this clay was just the coolest thing ever because you could just harden it in the oven in 15 minutes and you didn't have to wait overnight or anything like that. So that, it, it just really stuck with me and I just kind of played with it here and there as a hobby. And then in college for my graphic design senior thesis, I sculpted three figurines that personified fonts. 
and I'll throw them up on the screen really quick. And it's kind of funny because like graphic design senior makes sculptures for thesis, like that says it all right there. That's when I really discovered that I liked sculpting and I just kind of turned it into this little business and now I'm on YouTube doing something else. So this is my next adventure. Next question, can you make a tutorial on hands? Yes, that is coming. Next one. What material do you look for when you're looking for something for a thrift store transformation? Um, I look for things that are glass, ceramic, porcelain, anything that I know isn't gonna melt in the oven. I definitely stay away from plastic stuff. Next one. Doesn't the aluminum foil make your surface bumpy? It can if you're not applying enough clay to it or if you're not flattening the aluminum foil enough before you add the clay. So really, I just, when I'm bulking out armature, I am making the foil really dense. I'm not like making, I'm making sure there isn't any air inside there and it's just as smooth as I can possibly get it before I add the clay to it. Next question. My sculptures keep cracking when I bake them. What am I doing wrong? All right, this can either be an armature problem where like if you have limbs and pieces that are like drooping and cracking off in the oven, you might wanna make a stronger armature or this could also mean that there's air beneath the surface of the clay. If there's air in the sculpture, it's gonna to want to escape when it's exposed to heat. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're getting all of that out. Sometimes if I'm really, really worried about getting an air bubble or having a sculpture crack, I'll actually poke a hole in an area that you can't see so that the air has a direct exit. It doesn't have to force its way out of another part of the sculpture. Next one here. When you pre-bake, do you bake for the full time and temperature or just long enough to harden the surface a little bit? I worry about burning when baking for longer than 20 minutes. When I pre-bake personally, this is just what I do, I bake for the full time and at the full temperature. I don't really trust myself working with something that isn't fully cured just because it's really delicate. I know some people do that just fine, but personally, I bake for the full time and temperature. Next question, does polymer clay shrink in the oven? No, in my experience it doesn't. Next question, why do you sound so bored and annoyed in your videos? I've had a couple people ask me this in the comments and honestly, this couldn't be further from the truth because I am just naturally a very calm and relaxed person and then sometimes some of the voiceovers, I'm recording at like four o'clock in the morning and I'm really tired and I also have another job besides this, so please keep that in mind. I really love what I'm doing and if I didn't love it, I wouldn't be doing it. All right, I think that's it for this q and I really hope you found this informative. As always, thank you for being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Eddies of Clay, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.